Hi, my name is Coldbeer and let's start with the Deadly Tower of Monsters. The game treats itself as a 1970s movie. That is not a joke, that is the whole concept of the game. It is filled with classic themes such as the daughter versus tyrant father, the planet full of innocent ape creatures, the dashing space age liberator, the robot companion, or the tower full of treacherous mutations. As developers say, a timeless classic for all ages. So in general, this is an action-adventure sci-fi comedy game with dynamic narration set in a retro-futuristic environment. You can play it alone or together with your friends or mother-in-law on a shared or split screen. The game has full controller support and, honestly, full support of your poverty, because the price is more than friendly. Iris and the Giant this is a fusion of a collectible card game with RPG and roguelike elements. Although, don't get me wrong when I say collectible card game, this is strictly a single-player experience. You play as Iris, who must brave her fears in her imaginary world. Behind the game's unique minimalist art style, you will explore a touching story of a young woman facing her inner demons and soothing her raging giant inside. Game is short, it will eat up about 5 hours of your life. People on Steam are saying that the game has great art design and is quite easy to play, although keep in mind that it is roguelite, so it will require you to fail a few times to unlock powers and imaginary friends. Also be warned that the story is emotional and will play with your feelings. Legend of Keepers this is a mix of dungeon management and roguelite where you will lead your career as a dungeon manager. You'll join Dungeon's company and climb the corporate ladder, crush so-called heroes and protect the company's treasures. Your work will consist of hiring monsters, managing your employees and keeping an eye on your stock of traps. You don't want to run out of traps, that's for sure. Also, all that managing stuff can quickly go out of hand and just like in France every day, you will have to deal with employee strikes and other unexpected events. But hey, it's not a democracy here. You go on strike, you go into a meat grinder. Well, it's a figure of speech, or is it? Each run will be different, but you will keep some of the bonuses between runs. First, you will have to plan your defense against a group of adventurers, check their stats and resistances, and then place the best traps and monsters to defeat them. Or, you know, shamefully die and try again and again. Legend of Keepers has very positive reviews on Steam, so it may be the game you were looking for after all. World War Z Humanity is on the brink of extinction. From the Americas to Europe, the undead apocalypse continues to spread uncontrollably. And as the inevitable end looms, a hardened few band together to defeat the horde and outlive the dead. So basically all you have to do is to find a lot of canned food and wait for a month or so for every zombie to rot. But no, this is not what you will do, because otherwise this would be a very boring, lame food tasting game with, you know, survival elements. Because, you know, not every canned food is survivable. This game is nothing like that. World War Z is a co-op third-person shooter for up to four players, featuring swarms of hundreds of zombies. Based on a famous movie with Brad Pitt, the game focuses on fast-paced gameplay while exploring new storylines from all around the world. If you like zombies and shooting, keep in mind that the game has very positive reviews and it's probably a good match for you. Banners of Ruin Another dungeon crawler RPG roguelite deck builder. This time, instead of monsters and humans, we are getting smart medieval themed animal warriors and you are taking their lead. You'll have six races to explore with unique racial card pools and passives to choose from. You will level up your characters to unlock talent cards and powerful skills that can drastically impact your strategy. Well, that is if you have one. That is assuming that you are a smart war leader, true hero, and so on. And you are never doubt yourself you beautiful schmuck. And now subscribe, don't be a digital orphan without a loving channel. Witch it. This is a multiplayer hide and seek game where you are tasked with seeking hidden witches that blend in with the environment. Well, or play as a witch and do all that blending yourself. At first glance, that book on a shelf may look innocent, but remember, witches can disguise themselves as any physical object, although if you turn yourself into a pizza, you will look kinda suspicious on the ground or in the bookshelf as well. You need to think where and how to blend in. Sadly, there is no ability to transform yourself into hairy balls. That, that is Sad. Also, if you are a hunter, your perception skills will come in handy, that's no doubt. You will also be able to craft new items or even your own maps to play in. Game may look a bit childish, and honestly it is, but it has around 90% of positive reviews, so a great time is almost guaranteed. Solo 
This is an introspective puzzler set on a beautiful and surreal archipelago. Ye will reflect on your loving relationships by exploring contemplative, dreamlike islands. Solo is a game about love. Well, the name of the game probably suggests that you, like in real life, are not very good in the social field, but that doesn't stop you. The world is divided into archipelagos, and each archipelago is formed by small islands. Each island represents a unique puzzle you will have to solve before getting to the sleeping totems. And and awakening them to answer a question about love and relationships. The game is really wholesome, it's filled with beautiful environments and cute creatures. Solo was funded by the Fig platform and about 500 backers, but the amount of reviews left on Steam is not very high, to say the least, and just proves that love is bad for business. People on Steam are saying that the game is very atmospheric, but very short. It will take only about 3-4 to four hours of your boring life. Gloomhaven at first, this was made as a tabletop game, and as it reached incredible popularity, it was remade into a video game as well. So here you will lead your band of mercenaries through this unforgiving place where every move is crucial. Yeah, you sneeze, you die. No, probably not, but you get the point. You will have to carve your way through dungeons, forests, and dark caves filled with horrific monsters to reap your rewards, or die trying, possibly the latter, over and over again. People are talking that this game will surprise you with the amount of unique monsters, high replay value, and 100 hours of content, but it can scare you away with its very steep learning curve, so don't expect anything easy, it's not your sister. Sonic Frontiers this is that famous open-world Sony game you probably have heard about, but saw the price and decided to come back later. I'm not saying that this later is now. The price is still kinda steep, and you must be quite a money mountaineer to reach the top of this one. To say it in simple words, this game is still for rich people. Yeah, anyway, he will race across five massive overworld islands, brimming with dense forests, overflowing waterfalls, and sizzling desert landscapes, each with their own unique action platforming challenges and hidden secrets to uncover. Some people on Steam are saying that you will do yourself a favor if you skip all the story moments and just enjoy the action. And reviews on Steam are very positive, hovering above 90%. The Outer World it is definitely one of the best RPG games I have played in recent years. It is funny, it has secrets, many guns and places to explore. It's not just Fallout in space, I had more fun playing The Outer Worlds than I had playing Fallout 4, even if this is a bit smaller game. I can absolutely give it 9 cold beers out of 10 and recommend it to you without a doubt. But I have to mention that it has some cons as well, like unbalanced difficulty. You know, at first you die a lot, but later everything else dies in seconds, even the strongest monsters, then you may think, hey, I will switch from hard to the hardest difficulty. But you can't. You have to play the whole game on this hardest difficulty without switching it off, because developers decided to add some stupid achievements most of the players don't even care about. So you will feel overpowered all the time, and you can't do anything about that. That's why I didn't buy and didn't play the last DLC. I already feel like a combat god, everything just dies when I blink. Two Point Hospital here you will build and decorate a hospital, cure patients with utterly bizarre illnesses, train your staff and upgrade machines to create the most effective facility possible. Game is humorous, here you will find various funny diseases you can cure, like turtle head, premature mummification, emperor complex or monobrow for example. Yes, that is serious. Also, be sure that those illnesses are funny only to us, definitely not for our patients. You wouldn't want a penisitis on your face or assicles all over your body, I'm pretty sure of that. Rock of Ages 2. It may not look like one, but believe me, this is one of the most entertaining games I have ever played. Or as developers say, this is a rock-solid combination of rock-rolling action, deep strategy, captivating art and music from different ages of history. The game calls itself the greatest giant rocks rolling through historical artistic ages tower defense game. Yeah, try to repeat that. Rock of Ages 2 can be played as a single-player game, but it also cranks up on the emphasis on the chaotic new multiplayer for up to four rock rollers. New time periods, improved graphics, physics and destructibility powered by Unreal Real Engine 4. Just like in the original game, here you'll have various levels inspired by the greatest art periods in history. You will gaze upon exquisite art from the Egyptians, late Gothic era, early Renaissance and Surrealist movement, and all of them will carve a path of destruction with their rolling rocks of doom. <laughs> Positive reviews on Steam stuck around 90%, so the price is more than right. 
Festival Tycoon. So this is a micromanagement game about building music festivals. Here you will grow your fest from a backyard bonanza into an unmissable global event. Work with bands and with various brands to build an excellent reputation and rake in the big bucks. Pick from a wide catalog of buildings and decorations to design a fest ground that is practical as well as pretty. Craft around a theme, use and create custom apps, load local music and earn nice amounts of money. Well, if I play this game, I will definitely create a potato salad fest here and it will have awesome bands such as Tenacious D, Rammstein and Foo Fighters. Although for copyright reasons, they will probably be named Tenacious A, Rammstein and Foo Fighters. Anyway, with career mode, sandbox mode and even an extreme mode, there is plenty of ways to play. People on Steam are saying that the game is easy to learn and fun to play for a few hours, but you will probably get bored rather quickly, so the sale is the perfect time to obtain it. Neo 2 The Complete Edition here you can create your own original protagonist and embark on an adventure that will take you through devastated lands across Japan during the Sengoku period. Much like the previous title, which gained a lot of praise from fans and critics alike, Neo 2 contains an original story and a lot of action. This edition includes all the content from Neo 2 along with all three DLC expansions, The Tengu's Disciple, Darkness in the Capital and The First Samurai. You can also play the game at 120 frames per second if your monitor is a B also it supports 4K, ultra wide screens and so on. People on Steam are talking that this game is a masterpiece, well balanced title with great replayability value, but definitely not for those who suck at souls like games. But if you suck at souls like games, I have wonderful advice for you. Stop sucking, get good. See how easy it is? Lilith Odyssey this is a small but really ambitious indie project you probably never heard about. So here, after the great Nacho Wars have ended, a corrupt galactic government saps life and resources from the many war-weary planets it controls. Your alien family risks everything across an open-world galactic odyssey to find a mysterious land of new beginnings. And they are all aware of their simulated nature. Well, that's a twist. I always say that our world is a simulation, because there is only a slight tiny chance that our universe is the original one and not being simulated in a computer of some other civilization in another universe, which is itself simulated in some other computer by some even more advanced civilization in another universe, and the cycle may continue endlessly. So really, what are the chances that we live in the first one, the original universe? A rhetorical question, but makes you think, right? Anyway, you will embark on a galactic journey to Lilith, a faraway planet of new hope. You will discover the history of the Mulago galaxy, relax to in-game radio, grow your fishing, farming and space foring skills and enjoy casual adventure. The Eternal Cylinder you know how we are always whining about all the games being the same. All the games copy other games and then some copies become even more popular than the originals and then everyone is copying the copies until the cycle repeats itself. Yeah, that's not the case with the Eternal Cylinder. I doubt that I have seen anything like this. The game is obviously inspired by some crazy artist or made by one. So he will control this cute creature and wander around with various tasks. But the true meaning of this game lies in its name. An enormous robot rolling cylinder is approaching, and you, along with everything around, are its pizza dough. It is a mobile megastructure of unknown origin. It has destroyed and absorbed countless civilizations over the billions of years of its existence, and will do the same to you and your land. It can be delayed, but it has never been truly stopped. Well, maybe bigger being can stop it. W what do you mean by bigger being? I'm talking about your mama. <laughs> oh, shut up. So, I guess if you fail, everyone will die. Game has very positive reviews and it's really underrated. Also, the soundtrack is free to download. That is not what you see every day in this greedy world, that's for sure. Star Wars Episode 1 Racer. This is the oldest game in this list, but incredibly it's still amazing even today. I am probably one of the few guys on our planet for whom Episode 1 is the best Star Wars movie ever made. I've seen it about 150 times, I'm not joking. As a kid I had a PC and only three movies could be installed on its hard drive at the same time. So I had Matrix, Mummy with Brendan Fraser and Star Wars Episode 1. And I watched one of these movies every evening for a few years. That probably put 
puts me on a spectrum somewhere, I don't know. So, when Racer came out, I played it non-stop. Later, about 20 years have passed, and then I saw that it is on sale on PlayStation Store for like 2 euros or something. I was thinking back then that taking the game for this price would be just great addition for my collection, and I bought it. I wasn't expecting to play it because I am a sucker for good graphics, but the game aged so well I played it again without even noticing its age. So anyway, if you like racing games or Star Wars Episode 1, it's a must-have. Hotline Miami a game where you shoot things while listening to amazing music. What could be better? Well, probably a lot of things, but let's not dive into our fantasies about a bowl of refreshing potato salad or, you know, things that we cannot afford. But you know what is the thing almost everyone can afford? Come on, don't say anything about my sister. I mean everyone can afford this game, or to become my supporter on Patreon, or here on YouTube. Alright, I know, that was a nice try. Anyway, Hotline Miami wouldn't be this good if not for the music. The atmosphere it could along with the carnage on the screen is the best kind of symbiosis I have ever seen, although be ready to press R to restart over and over again. So keep in mind that it is hard, harder than you can imagine. That's what she said. Styx, Master of Shadows. This is an infiltration game with RPG elements, taking place in a dark fantasy universe where you sneak, steal and assassinate your way through as Styx, 200 years old goblin. Here you will be completing various missions and at the same time avoiding detection, sneak in the shadows, assassinate your targets in close combat or, you know, orchestrate accidents. RPG mechanics let you unlock new powerful skills, impressive special moves and optimize the equipment that will grant you spectacular powers such as invisibility, which is not meant for any creepy activities you just had in mind. You can also buy second part of the game, it is discounted as well, just be careful don't acquire the collection bundle that includes a DLC. You see that DLC is just a weapon and an outfit, nothing more. Also it's not cosmetics only, these items are quite powerful so in a way it's a pay to win DLC. That is a blasphemy beyond any words. Torchlight 2 People on Steam are saying that this game is highly addictive and can fast forward your life rather quickly. Some people say that this is a spiritual brother of Diablo 2, but I can't agree with that. It's too cartoony, the models and color palette reminds me of World of Warcraft instead. Although I played World of Warcraft for several years, I still have the best memories. I think I will get back to it. That is when I'm old, some 25 years from now. Anyway, Torchlight 2 is great, very complex and fun, and if you are cool with this colorful Disney princess visual style, it may be one of the the best action RPG games you have ever played. You know, if you like Diablo or similar games like Grim Dawn or Path of Exile, Torchlight 2 is probably a must play. Thank you for watching, have a nice day, and I'll see you next time, bye!